All right. Uh, thank you to the moderators for giving me the opportunity to talk today. Um, uh, like she said, I'm going to talk about the laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair and why this is still a great approach for your patients. I have no disclosures. So when we talk about what makes a great hernia operation, we heard a lot of these different factors that go into your decision making. Uh, what Dr. Bachman was saying is very relevant. We want, we want a hernia operation that minimizes complications, has a fast recovery, one preferably that is easy to learn or easy to teach, and one that has reproducible results. And lastly, once we have a great hernia repair, we want to make sure that it's cost effective for patients and our healthcare system. So when we look first about minimizing complications, the difference between a laparoscopic approach and an open hernia repair, it is very complicated to evaluate these kind of studies. The studies need to be first looking at the same patient population. So, oh, thank you. So as long as we're looking at the same patient population, we want patients that are having a unilateral repair for both hernia repairs, one that aren't recurrent, and one that are um, in male patients only. And so when we do this, looking at this, um, this paper from the Inter International Hernia Cohort, we, we see that the laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair versus Lichtenstein repair in a meta-analysis of 23 randomized controlled trials of 4,500 patients, it does favor laparoscopic repair on several complications that can happen after hernia repair. So such as wound infection, decreased hematoma formation, decreased nerve injury, and fewer incidents of chronic groin pain. And so like Dr. Bachman said, the difference between a laparoscopic repair and an open repair is very small. And so looking at these differences is one way we can help to differentiate between the two repairs. When we look at the reasons why an open repair might be better, we heard about them in the last talk. So we see that uh, when you compare the Lichtenstein repair to the laparoscopic repair, the open repair does show shorter operative times by about 10 minutes in some of the bigger studies. It also shows a lower incidence of seromal formation, though we aren't able to see how clinically relevant that is. When we look specifically at recurrence rate, which is a big factor in a lot of, time, a lot of our decision making, we see that there's really no difference. The recurrence rates are very similar between laparoscopic hernia repair and a Lichtenstein repair when we're looking at um, a single-sided repair. There were some early reports that indicated that a higher recurrence rate was present in a laparoscopic repair, but this difference dissolved when you, when you really standardized the studies, only including studies which had a Lichtenstein repair only and standardizing the mesh size. Now if we look at faster recovery, we can see a small difference between the laparoscopic repair and an open repair, and that favoring the laparoscopic repair, patients are getting back to their activities or their work um, approximately a week sooner. And so this is, comes into discussions with patients oftentimes because they want to know exactly when they're going to be back on their feet. Now if we look at what's easy to learn, easy to teach, this comes into the play a lot. I mean, we're all, many of us are at teaching institutions and trying to teach the next generations of surgeons how to do these procedures. And the laparoscopic hernia repairs are not the easiest. We know that the learning curve for a laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair is between 20 and 250 cases, and that's a lot. So we, we know that there's acceptable results in as few as 20 cases, um, but studies do demonstrate that there are more complications early in adoption of the technique, specifically the TEP technique. There are ways to mitigate this risk, and that would be with patient selection. So if you're early in your learning curve for a TEP repair, choosing patients that have a primary unilateral hernia and preferably patients with lower BMIs, less than 25. There are also studies that show that simulation training does make a difference. And so simulation has been shown to decrease the operative time. It's shown to improve trainee performance, and it's also shown to, in, to decrease the amount of intra- and post-operative complications and need for overnight stays in these patients. And so what we found from studies is that, in specifically TAP studies, that it's safe and reproducible by trainees as long as they're under the supervision of an experienced laparoscopic surgeon. And the only difference between an experienced laparoscopic surgeon and one that is just um, supervised by one is the operative time itself. 
So now when we look at cost effectiveness, between laparoscopic and open cost, Dr. Bachman mentioned that the laparoscopic repair is more expensive, and that's exactly right. We know that the direct operative costs are higher with a laparoscopic repair compared to an open repair. However, when you can take into consideration the community costs and how, how much time is taken off by patients from their work and their productivity, then there's very little difference when you compare this to open repair. So it kind of depends on how you look at it. Now, if we start to compare laparoscopic versus robotic, cost always comes into the conversation. We know that direct costs with, are lower with laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair than those repaired with a robot. Um, in this study of unilateral inguinal hernia repairs, they looked at 2,400 cases. Uh, 734 were robotic assisted and 1,600 were laparoscopic. The average cost for robotic assisted repair was over $5,500, and the laparoscopic repair was $3,200. They found that the variable cost was significantly higher in the laparoscopic group, but there were higher operative times in the robotic group. There was no difference in conversion to open or length of stay. So the conclusions from this study are really that the direct costs are lower with a laparoscopic repair compared to a robotic repair, and the fixed costs are really the main driver in this difference. Medical device cost is always comes into play with robotic studies, uh, plus longer operative times, and those both take into consideration when we're comparing costs between the two different techniques. And their conclusions from this study is that a laparoscopic unilateral inguinal hernia repair is more cost effective than a robotic assisted approach. Now onto some special considerations. So when we consider people in specifically hernia repairs of women, we know that a laparoscopic repair has a lower recurrence rate than with an open repair in women. In this recent study from JAMA last year, it's a systematic review looking at 55 studies and over 43,000 women. We see there's a recurrence rate in the laparoscopic repaired group of 1.2% versus the open group of 4.9%. And they reported that 40% of all recurrences in the open repair group were due to femoral hernias, and 0% of the recurrences were due to femoral hernias in the laparoscopic group. And so this study is just in line with the guidelines already placed by the European Hernia Society, the Hernia Surge Group, and re recommending laparoscopic repair for women. When we look at bilateral uh, hernias, this study from 2010 was a prospective, non-randomized clinical study looking at 53 patients who underwent a bilateral Liechtenstein repair and 75 patients who under, bi went, underwent bilateral TEP repair. What we found is that the TEP group had shorter operative times, 48.8 minutes versus 60.4, and a low po lower postoperative complication rate. They also had a shorter hospital stay, which was statistically significant. And they, these authors report that a TEP is an effective approach for bilateral inguinal hernias as long as there is experience involved. And all, another consideration just to make is with regards to recurrence. And so Dr. Bachman mentioned this as well. You know, we know that the, the current recommendations suggest that use an alternate approach when you're dealing with a recurrence. So if a patient had an open repair and now has a recurrence, that you should consider doing a laparoscopic repair as long as you have the expertise available. So in conclusion, I've, I've tried to demonstrate here that the laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair is still a great approach for an inguinal hernia repair. Uh, first of all, it minimizes many of the complications that we look at. It has a faster recovery than open repair. It's relatively easy to learn and easy to teach. It has reproducible results. It's cost effective, and it has been shown to be great for women. Thank you.